welcome to the Speaking of Jazz podcast series with Manny Kellogg in association with Music Tribes Unite News. Now let's get started. Well, jazz lovers, hello again. Hello, hello, hello. And thank you for tuning in and listening to this week's episode of uh, Speaking of Jazz with me, Manny Kellogg, and I'm your host, and I'm still swinging hard. I uh, also like to let you know that we're into season three here, and I'm very excited and proud about that. Today, my guest is a man who is just a fantastic person. He's an educator. He is also the executive director and CEO for the Mid-Atlantic Jazz Festival. He is a jazz enthusiast. He has a lot of knowledge about jazz. He's a band leader. And I'm going to stop talking, and I'm going to let him (laughs) do some talking. How you doing, Dr. Paul? Let's talk. Uh, Let's go. It's your show. uh, Oh, man, I'm doing fine. Thank uh, thank you, Mr. Kellogg, (laughs) because I don't... I don't know if I deserve that that kind of introduction. My God, I'm like, who who is he talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about Dr. Paul. <laughs> now, thanks, thank, thank you so much. I, you know, appreciate it, and so happy. Thanks for having me on your show. You know, it's a pleasure, man. Thank you for taking time to be here with me. Yes, man, my, it's, the honor is all mine, truly. You know, I'd, I'd like to like to start and just kind of relax and have a little joke here and there and tell whatever you'd like to tell. Uh, let's, 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 let's jump into it. Where are you originally from, man? And uh, who were some of your influences to get you going? Oh gosh, I'm a, I'm originally from Houston, Texas. So okay. I, I grew, I grew up in Houston and I was there and went through, you know, you know, all through school, high school, through, uh, through college. And uh, and I transferred from Texas Southern University uh, to Howard University upon right. he- yeah upon hearing a uh, a record, and then I actually came up here uh, um, with my with my girlfriend at the time who ended up being my wife, and we came up we came up to the, the D.C. area in Washington D.C. because he was living in D.C. and we uh, stayed with him for a couple of weeks. And it was just, it was, I was, I just, I just fell in love with the area. And I, yeah. I went around and, um, you know, still in college and I was sitting in with bands pretty much the whole, the whole two weeks I was here. Very but good. yeah, but yeah, I fell in love with the area and the, and, the, and the players that were here. But, but, but before, you know, through high school, I would say my first influence was, was Conrad Johnson, uh, Conrad okay. O. Johnson. Uh, he's, he's very famous. Um, a uh, band high school band director in in Houston, Texas and and he was a saxophone player and he was uh, uh I mean he was pretty much you know pretty much everything for is what we were at the time I didn't know the high school was in the ghetto you know how they, you know how things you go, you grow yeah. up and you find oh wow I grew up in the ghetto uh the yeah, urban yeah. urban area I didn't I had no idea <laughs> right so, right but he he what he did was his love for jazz and he um he he started something called I was at Cashmere High School he started something called the Cashmere Stage Band and so long before I got there he was they were going to these uh, to these uh, jazz festivals and they were you know they were you know predominantly all white and they would and they would win the festival or they would do very very well and right, so, right. and and my sister, I have you know you know four of my sisters are older than me, so they all went to Kashmir, and so I just wanted to be in the Kashmir stage band, and yeah. uh, Conrad Johnson was so successful over his uh, career that they made a movie about him called Thunder Soul uh, that was picked up by Jamie Fox. Okay. So, yeah. So it ca- it came out I guess maybe about ten years ago. Very yeah. good. Yeah, so that's that. That's where that was. That was my first, uh, uh, you know, true uh, um, influence. And he was really good friends with Arnett Cobb, if you can believe it or not. So really, okay, right. So Arnett Cobb would come when we were in high school. Arnett Cobb would come to come to and play for us, and uh, and uh, so you know, it, it was. I, I got to hear, 
you know, the, 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 you know, just starting out, I got to hear, you know, the fundamentals and the roots of jazz or what it's supposed to sound like, you know, from a young, you know, from, from high school on really. Dig it, dig it, dig it. I hear what you're saying, man. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, my next question is I'm, I'm leading up to some, some, some heavy stuff in a little bit. So just strap <laughs> on and we're going to go okay. for a ride. Okay. Who are the, uh, artists is that that you've worked with or are working with now oh wow the artists that i worked with um hmm i tell you what one artist that i got from new orleans that i got to work with you know pretty intimately was kent jordan uh okay. kent jordan's flute player and he was really he grew he went to school with winton and branford everybody know you know the marcellus brothers or winton and yes, branford yes. so he went right. He went to school with he went he was he was in school with them. They went to that Noka school where all of those you know, Terrence and and um, uh, 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 was that D Donald Harrison, Winton, Branford. They all went to that school called Noka. So anyway, oh, yeah, yeah, Kent was there. And so one time, Kent, uh, I was playing at uh, Tacoma Station down in D.C. and Kent and well, Winton came in and um and sit in with the band and kent wasn't you know he asked me to join his band to make a long story short he had a record he had a record deal on on columbia and that was my first uh entree really just getting to understand what the what the what the business was like on that kind of level you know okay so so he he would he was he be, you know he, he would be one of course i played you know gigs with all kinds of people like uh kevin eubanks um, um, uh, uh, let me see. Um, I, I can't, I, you know, it's, I've actually been on the, I've been on the bandstand with, uh, um, Donald, um, Don Wilkinson. Now okay. Don Wilkinson, Don Wilkinson was a tenor player, used to play with Ray Charles, but, um, and a lot of people think that that was David Fathead Newman. Now I'm, I'm like, 17 you know years old 18 years old in this big band down in houston texas and a lot of people think it was david fed had newman on those early record those those uh ray charles uh recordings it was yeah. actually don, don wilson and don okay. wilson he was he was such a dynamic uh a uh, player because he 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 could actually play his horn you know how vocalists get get, get the type of it you know I don't care how good the horn player is, but if a vocalist come up there, boom, it's over. You know, <laughs> he was he he was he was a saxophone player that could actually garner the same type of almost the same type of, of attention as a vocalist. So I got to sit right next to him. I was playing alto in those days, and he was playing first tenor. I was playing second alto. So we, you know, in the section they sat right right back together. Right, and, right, uh, right together. So I was, I, I, it was just, it was just such a lesson. It was such a lesson listening to him and sitting next to him and, and, and uh, all that. But he, a lot of people don't, I mean, like, unless you're really into that, you wouldn't know who um, Don Wilkinson, um, you know, was and is and his significance. But uh, he was, he was a pretty, I mean, you know, he was, he was, he was a major cat. And I learned a lot from him just by sitting there. You know, very good. See, a lot of a lot, a lot of people just remember the name David Fathead Newman. Of course, of course. You know, because, because he was on. Yeah, because he was he came on later, and he and he was on a couple of hits, and you right. know, yeah. So, but but uh, but it was it was Don Wilkinson, you know, on a lot of those earlier recordings. So, well, tell me yeah. something. Did you, mm -hmm. you you mentioned Wynton Marcellus. Yes. Uh, did you get a chance to really meet him, rub shoulders with him? Absolutely. Absolutely. What kind of person was he? Uh, uh, Winton was. Very, I'll get, get you this here quick, sir. I don't know how much time you can cut me off when, uh, whenever. So I was. I was still. I hadn't moved up to Washington D.C. And Winton came out, and of course he just took over the whole. You know, he took over the whole jazz jazz landscape. So that someone that organized a master class with Winton at University of Houston. So I went. And the master class never materialized, mm. and so uh, and so, the, went and saw how a couple of other people were talking to you know a couple of band directors and other people were talking to me. So he came over, he started talking and blah 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 blah. And then I, I told him, I said, man, I would really like to meet your brother Winton. I mean, uh, Branford. Mm -hmm. And he says, he says, well, okay, if you take me back to the uh, hotel, I'll let you meet him. He said, can we stop by McDonald's first? I said, yeah. <laughs> 
So we're sitting in McDonald's. We're sitting in McDonald's, and Winton is like humming all of these these Miles Davis solos. He says, "Hey, man, do you know this?" He goes, "You know this tune and blah blah." And I said, "No, nah, no, nah, man, you need to check that out. You need to check that out." Well, what about this? And then he he would hum, he would he would maybe hum a little bit of Train solo, and you know, uh, so check out this recording and blah blah. blah. Really, really, and that was, you know, of course, I think Winton is, uh, he's a year younger than I am. So, of course, here's somebody in my generation that knew the music so backwards and forwards. It was, it was, uh, you know, it was, it was, it was just mind blowing to me. Right. So we finished, so we, I get back to the hotel. We take him, I take him to the hotel. Winton just burst into Branford's room. He had a key. I mean, I'm, I'm serious, and I, and we, we've talked about this, you know, back in the day, and and he and and Bramford said, well, he knew I wasn't doing anything, <laughs> you know, but but you know, but it's like it's like boom, he br- he busts into the room, Bramford is in there, you know, un, you know, underwear on, watching, yeah, yeah. watching like t- you know Saturday morning television, like cartoons and stuff like that, you know, just a really really chill guy. And then I and I and went and said, "Hey man, this cat wants to wants to, wanted to meet you." So Bramford said, "Come on in." Da 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 da. And he says, "He said, what you play? Play saxophone." He says, "I want to hear you play." I says, "Nah, you don't really, you know." He says, "No, no, no I want to hear you play." So he like, you know, he like, insisted. So he, I got his horn, and I started playing. Blah, 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 blah. He said, "Okay, that's enough. That's enough." <laughs> yeah. Where are we hanging out today? I mean, it was just like that. Really, and and I took him back up to the college, and uh, we went to dinner. I mean, lunch, and then uh, he gave me some tickets to the show later that night because they was playing in um 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 at Joan at, at Jones Theater. To make a long story short, I they they you know, of course, I've been knowing them a while. They've been always very very cool to me. Yeah, uh, you know, you know, Winton and uh, Bradford, and now um, recently um, in the last few years since I've been doing the festival, uh, 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 Delphio. So I know the no they they they've I I see the thing about it is when you talk um sometimes when you talk truthfully without a filter some people think that as an insult you know you know pe- people are insulted but you know and then also too you know when you're 20 years old and you're told that you're the savior of jazz or you're 21 years old and someone's telling you a lot of people have problems with with Winton or the whatever is because they they might bring up something that happened 30 years ago. It's like, okay. hey man, people evolve, man. You know, right, people, right. People evolve. And like if you put a mic in front of the face of someone who just won two Grammys and they're 20 years old, of course he he probably thinks everybody's lazy or you know, you know how you know how um um you 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 know how youth is you youth you you thought we say we say stupid stuff until we say oh man <laughs> man I I said that you know that kind of a thing so yeah yeah we say stuff out the side of our mouth that we really don't even mean we don't even mean yeah until you yeah, get yeah. until you have a few more experiences and I think that was some of the some of the stuff that happened early on with Witten and so it made you know and you know how first impressions you know they go deep you know that's they right. Go deep. So and first they go, impression is a lasting impression. It's a lasting impression, and yes, so sir. Yes, sir. and people don't give it, don't give it. You know, they don't give you a benefit of the doubt. You know that you could have actually, um, you know, grown since then. You know. Well, are you still in contact with either one of them? Absolutely. Well, Branford and I have, be, have become really good friends. So very good. Uh, yeah. So we, we we you know we talk we we talked the day uh, actually yesterday. So we talk all the time. He um um. He came to the Mid Atlantic Jazz Festival in nineteen and we uh, two thousand nineteen and we played a classical piece together because he's really into classical music. Oh, so, really? Uh, yeah. And this last past uh, the, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, Delphio, the trombone player, he came to my camp. So it was it's, it's, it's crazy. So he called he calls me and he says, "Hey, man, I'm playing at the 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 Sculpture Garden on Friday." I'm saying, "Okay." He says, I need some play where to rehearse between Richmond and DC because my bass player lives in Richmond. So okay. he thought he thought when I when I was used to work for Gettysburg College, he thought Gettysburg, Gettysburg, Pennsylvania was in between. <laughs> <laughs> 
it, it, it took me a while to realize what he was talking about. I thought he was talking about, you know, um, Fredericksburg College. And yeah. I don't, yeah, and I don't really know the band director down there, but he's, a, you know, he's a cat. And um, and at that, I said, wait a minute, are you thinking about Gettysburg? I said, no, man, that's in a whole totally different direction. So <laughs> I, they ended up not having a rehearsal. But I tell you what, you can do. You can come by my camp and work with my kids for about an hour or so, you know. And he says, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's and that's how it happened. So he came by, he came by the camp, and it was wonderful, you know. He worked with the kids for about an hour and fifteen minutes, and it was it was just beautiful, you know. So fantastic, fantastic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, uh, along those lines, you've been saying some some really funny stuff, man. What are, what are I'm gonna stay on this? I'm gonna stay there for a minute. What are some of the most funniest stories that you can share with us throughout your that you've encountered throughout your career? The funniest. Oh wow, the funny man. <laughs> I, I, oh well, here here's one. I don't I don't know how funny this is, but we were we were uh, like I said, I had a long tenure in the '90s back at Tacoma Station. The the owner at Tacoma Station was a uh, was you know he was an older guy, Bobby Boyd. He 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 knew all the jazz cats, so he loved jazz. So he would have Art Blakey come in. Uh, obviously, you know, Winton would come. Winton would come in under the cover and, uh, and and you know not advertised and play. A lot of people would come through when I and I was playing there on Tuesday nights and Friday nights. So one one time he had Art Blakey in there. Really, Art Blakey and Woody Shaw was in the band and Kenny Garrett. My and goodness. So, and 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 Art Blakey was, you know, he was Art Blakey. So he was he was sitting at the at the at the bar talking a whole bunch of stuff. And then <laughs> so I after so, a couple of people had prodded me on, prodded me up because I didn't know Kenny Garrett, you know. So the the, ba the way to sit in with the band would have been to ask Kenny, and then Kenny could have orchestrated it or let me know, yay or nay, it's not really cool. So I go up to I go up to Art Blakey, and I says, uh, "Mr. Blakey, sir, I would really love to sit in with the band." He says, "Do you play jazz?" I say, "Yes," and he goes, "Well, then, if you play jazz, you need to come to New York. They, you uh, know, ain't no, yeah, you know, uh, you, you shouldn't be here. And, you know, you say, say you come to New York, you know." And, and he was eating some chicken wings and just turned around and just. <laughs> <laughs> you know, come eat these chicken wings. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So then, a friend and I, we go up to um, we go up to New York. They were playing at Sweet Basil's. They had a run there. It was pouring raining, and I got there and I said, "Mr. Blake, it's me, Paul from from uh, 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 DC. Can I sit? In, can I sit in now?" He says, uh, I, "He he said he said to the to the effect." We have an audit. You got to find out when the auditions are. <laughs> you know, it was, it was, it was, it, it was. Also, I said, I see, I see. So then I finally caught on. You know, I finally caught on. You, you know, that's not the way to do it. You know, okay, yeah, but, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, that's not the way to do it. But it was, it was. I mean, but I mean, but on a bandstand, all kinds of things have happened. But the music has fallen and fallen down. Well, you probably know that yourself. And you know, you've been rehearsing, and all of a sudden, something happens, and. The, the music fall off, or we were playing on a on a on a rooftop one time in Rockville, and we had all this music, and 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 all of a sudden this wind gust and just took the whole, the whole. I mean, everybody's music just went everywhere. Did you have so, the clothespins on there? Uh, we had clothes, of course. You know, we had, we had, we had, we had clothespins, and people were using their cell phones for for paperweights and all that old kind of stuff, and just music went everywhere. <laughs> it was the, the the funniest thing. We just started making up stuff. We just started making up stuff. It was cool to us, but the person who was singing, uh, they were not having, <laughs> they weren't having a good time because they wasn't here. Uh, you know, she wasn't hearing the horn parts exactly like, uh, like on the uh, uh, on the thing. I tell you a really good one that made me think of this is story. So, you go know, ahead on, you, go ahead you on. Know, you know, nine one one. Okay, so not you know, nine one one happened, and you know the, the shit, the city, everything shut down. Nothing, nothing's happening, happening. So they started this campaign to try to get uh, uh, tourists back to uh, D.C. So they put together this big band, and we was were filming right in front of the Capitol. We all had on you know white suits and all this kind of stuff, and Roberta Flack was one of the artists. Okay. 
So she came out, you know, with the whole, you know, she's Roberta Flack, you know, yeah, I, yeah. I hate to, I hate to use the word diva, but she had that thing going on. So we started playing this tune right before we started recording. She goes, uh, I'm not feeling that. Can we move it up a half step? Now this is big band music. Whoa. And, and so we all kind of looked at it and I forget who was conducting and say, let's try it. So we went up a half step and she's like, uh, she said, no, 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 I'm not, I'm not feeling it. Can we, can we move it back down like a third or something? I don't know. You know, <laughs> you know, it was, it was like, now some people in the band were, their eyes were as big as watermelons because now <laughs> you're having to look at one note and then reading it, you know, uh, you know, three half steps down. Yeah. And, and, and believe it or not, we, that was a couple of more gyrations, but we ended up there. We ended up like a minor third down from where, where, where the music was. And it was, it was, it was, it actually worked out. And she, and when it was over, it, um, it kind of, it kind of seemed like a test, but after it was over, she was really, really complimentary to the band, you know, because said, gosh, that was, uh, I'm really, really sorry. Da, 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 da. But it was, it was, it was just, I'm giving you the short version, but okay. there was a lot of, a lot of eye rolls. There were a lot of, <laughs> you know, uh, people trying to, you know, talk, you know, give her tea and, you know, all that kind of stuff to try to, you yeah, know, yeah. you know, get it, get her going. But it was after all of that, we we moved it down and uh and it was what, what was the tune? I don't remember. I don't remember. It was it was one of her. It was obviously it was one of her tunes. And it okay. was and, and and to make it you, you know to not to be boosting the band up, even though there was a lot of great players in the band, it it wasn't that hard. You know, it wasn't like you know you know it wasn't like a a whole yeah. bunch of noty type of things. You know. Yeah. 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 But it was you know it was it was. You, challenging enough to pay attention to, you know, for, you know, a horn player to look at a one note and think about it, you know, a third away, you know. The main thing, you got through it and you we made got, the gig. Yeah, exactly. That's what, that's what, that's what the gig, like, like, like the famous person told me, all gigs ain't the same. <laughs> I haven't found, I haven't played one yet. That was yeah. like last night. Right. Exactly. Exactly. I haven't done it yet, man. And uh, like they say, there's, there's there's no two stages the same. It, it, I don't care how you try, it won't be the same. Wow, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna jump in here and uh, take a little break here and, enter, and let the people know who they're listening to. And uh, for my jazz listeners, you're listening to Speaking of Jazz with Manny Kellogg. I'm your host, and I'm coming your way each week with different and brand new guests. You never know who I have unless you tune in. <laughs> so don't miss a show. And that's every week, Speaking of Jazz with uh, Manny Kellogg, and I'm your host. And if you'd like to be a guest on the show, just email me at, email me at speakingofjazz.guess at gmail.com. That's speakingofjazz.guess at gmail.com. You know, and uh, I also would like to thank... Uh, Daryl Craig Harris at Music Matters in Las Vegas, Nevada, and uh, Nigel J. Farmer in France, who is our publisher, Josh, Jazz Tribe News, who's also making this show pop uh, very promising and successful. And I thank you guys for that. Enough talk on my side. Let's jump back in here with Dr. Paul Carter. Let's go, man. Let's get back on it. What are you, what are you currently uh, working on, Doc? Any tours, any shows, recordings? Uh, well, I'll tell you, there's a band that I'm actually having a really fun time with, and it's called Car Keys. It's, it's with uh, with saxophonist Marshall Keys here in town, like a DC legend. Okay. Um, uh, and so we, at first, it, taught, it turned out to be, because his name was Keys and my last name was Carr, we would always, in <laughs> passing, we would always, in passing, talk about, you know, we should start the band Car Keys. So one day we were at an event and we talked about it a little bit more seriously. And of course, as you know, uh, Manny, you got to get a gig before you can get a band. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes, sometimes, people, sometimes people try to get it the other way around. Just, other just, way do, around. A gig, just do a rehearsal and get a gig. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. It works better. You can do that. I'm just going to say you can try that. But it works better to have a couple of gigs and yeah. then, and then, you know, backfit, backfill the band to that. So that's that's what we did. 
And it was it 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 it, it is it has been uh, just a beautiful collaboration. And I think I think the differences in the uh, the way I play and the way Marshall plays. I think you you, you know contrast is everything. Like they say, uh, con, you know styles make a fight. At the using that boxing analogy, I think yes, the yes. contrast and like the contrast with Sonny Stitt and um, and Gene Ammons. You know, yeah, Sonny sure. Stitt was. Yeah, Sonny, yeah, Jug. Yeah, Sonny Sit was the scat cat and, and Jug, you know, laid in the cot, laid in the pocket in the groove. And, and that's what that was the beauty of it, you yeah, know? Yeah. You know, so so uh, I, I, I think not I think we're you know, we're we're going towards that. We're not on that level, of course, but I think there's the con enough contrast in the way we play that I think it keeps it interesting for the uh, uh, people. And so we have a couple of uh, uh, fall dates uh, coming up and we're we are constantly adding to the repertoire. Very good. And then what I'm always working on, I have a I have a CD that I ha that's already recorded and mixed with um, with Buster Williams and uh, Bruce Barth, uh, Michael Bowie, and uh, Lewis Nash on drums. And so that yeah, yeah so that C that CD is in the uh, is ready to go. So hopefully that will be uh, my work now is to try to get that out in the fall. You know, very good. But and here be again, sure to, be mm -hmm. sure to give me a copy, man. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. But but here again, you know, when you you gotta you gotta release the CD around some gigs. <laughs> <laughs> so if you have a so if you release a CD and you don't have any gigs, you know, so it might not reflect too well, you know. So CD's gonna stay in your in your trunk. To, tell, tell me about them on the, <laughs> on the closet right there. <laughs> I, I got I got some too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they gonna stay in the closet back there. So yeah, uh, and and of course we're always working on the uh, Mid Atlantic Jazz Festival. So this this year coming up, 2023 will be our 14th one. So very good, you know. It's, I know that's a lot of work, isn't it? It's it's it, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of uh, preparation. What I really, what I really, what it has made me do is uh, is have make me have a respect for people that put together any kind of jazz show, any kind of show. Period. Any kind of show, it just makes me have a lot of respect for people because there's so many things going on. There's so many tentacles. There's so many, so many. Uh, um, Gosh, you're dealing with so much, and a lot of times, especially in jazz, when you you might see this big organization that's doing this whole jazz thing, but usually it's coming down to three or four core people. You know what I'm saying? That's actually yes. doing the bulk of the work. You know, and so me, you said, I was when I was small organization, I really, I really appreciate that. So I just 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 going to say it's a lot of work, and I appreciate people. Uh, uh, that actually do that, you know, that 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 produce shows and and especially in jazz. You know, I I can I can uh, really say that I played uh, at the festival a couple of times behind a uh, couple of couple of vocalists. Uh, matter of fact, I played behind Connie East Washington. Yeah. yeah. And I played behind uh, Janine Gilbert Carter. Absolutely. Yeah. And you have that thing so airtight man <laughs> and I, I i take my hat off to you because i know what you're saying that is a lot of work you know i just sometimes when i was out there i would just walk around and be in in oz and man how does he do this <laughs> you know it's not something that you can just dream up like right now you're dreaming it up for next year right you know it's not like you can dream it up right now and put it on tomorrow you know, it takes planning to do that. And I take my hat off to you, Dr. Paul. I, I, I really appreciate it. But I have to give the have to give the credit to, uh, you know, Ronnie Wells, because she she started she she was the founder of the East Coast Jazz Festival. And I worked in her band and I also used to work at, um, as one of the judges for her um, for her uh, uh, college contest because she the fish milton contest so i was okay. one of the judges and sometimes and, and also uh another a brother that that you know very well was also a judge and that was west biles oh yeah dr yeah. biles dr biles <laughs> so yeah we, he's another uh, doctor not the doctor so you know west and i and the the third judge would would kind of move around but we would be in there listening to these college players we'd start at i don't know 
12 o'clock in the, in, in the afternoon and we'd be two or three in the morning, you know, giving you know, listening to them and trying to come, trying to come down to, uh, uh, to trying to find uh, 10 semifinals. But anyway, I'm saying all that to say, I did kind of see the festival from, you know, uh, from behind the doors. And what we did was we, 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 um, we modeled mid Atlantic after, uh, um, East Coast Jazz Festival. Okay. Yeah, we modeled it afterwards, and of course, you know, it, it you, you know, we 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 changed some things and added some things and kept some things the same. Blah blah blah. You know. You know, I was there. Uh, matter of fact, I I played there with Wes uh, Sugar Biles this this past season, and we I did a jam session with him. I was just there oh. for one night. Oh, you did it. Yeah. Oh, what? Well, thank you so much for doing that. I didn't know that. Wow. <laughs> I, I was just know. there for for one night only. No, because the jam session is, I think that's 12 to 2. So that remind me of the old days. Yeah, yeah, it's <laughs> yeah. But 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 you be you you I told you thank you because I know you you know like you were up night late that night. But the thing about it is you'd be surprised that some people don't the only event they come through to the festival is the jam session. Really? You know? Yeah. That's it was all packed they in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and again I applaud you for bringing all those busloads of students <laughs> to be a part of uh, Mid-Atlantic, man. Thank you so much. You know, oh. and I, I'm a mentor myself and uh, that just knocked me out to see that happen. You know, I wanted to bring some of them kids on the show, man. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. I, the, the well, as you know, that's what it's all about. So if we don't, you know, you know, the old cliche, if we don't expose it to them, if they don't come and see, you know, people like you there, like, like Wes there, you know, where is it going to go? So they need, they, I mean, you know, uh, uh, you, you know, you guys are like, you know, like direct source guys, you know, I mean, you know, not to put not, I mean, you know, you know what I'm saying? It's like, it, it, you know, you're like those guys, like you guys, like you and Wes, and it, that's just, I mean, you're not too far away from removed from the creators of this music. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. You, you're not, you know, you know what I'm saying? So, I it, like to stay in the cut myself, man. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So if you know, it, it's about exposing the kids to those, you know, to players like you, and and so they can see what's going on and what it what what the, what the legacy of this music is. See, a lot of a lot of a lot of kids and a lot of parents, they 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 think that jazz is just an you know another activity, but it's it's really not it's way more than just an activity this is more than the debate team and i'm not putting anything down or the math team i'm not i'm not putting any of that down because all of that is fine but when you play when you're in jazz when you really are into the fold of the it's a it's a different thing so mm -hmm. and a lot of them so that's what they see when they see that you know uh you know uh you know somebody as yourself or or, or west just because we talking about you guys have played with so many so many people so many different kinds of acts and there's that whole there's that whole lintage and that whole legacy this is no this is more than just an activity <laughs> yeah 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 i hear you man yeah you know again i applaud you dr paul i really do man and i am so uh honored to know you and be able to call you a friend of mine. And I'm not saying Likewise. that, I'm not saying that lightly, it's from the heart, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. And but on we, that note, we're gonna let our uh, listeners know again, uh, you're speaking to Manny Kellogg and uh, you're listening to Speaking of Jazz. Again, I'm your host, I'm coming to you every week with a different guest. And again, like I said earlier, you'll never know who you're listening to or who's going to be on the show unless you tune in. Again, this is Speaking of Jazz, and I'm your host, Manny Kellogg. If you'd like to be a guest on the show, all you got to do is just email me at speakingofjazz.guest at gmail.com. It's speakingofjazz.guest at gmail.com. Well, I got a little ways to go here with Dr. Paul. I'm going to stop talking and dive right back in. Dr. Paul, welcome back. Uh, mm -hmm. What are you doing now? I know you, you're, you're a mentor and you're an educator. Let's talk about your scholarship program. Uh, well, we, we have a couple. So what, what I, I just, I started the, the uh, Jazz Academy of Music and because of branding, I had to call it, they, they, they I had to call it Paul Carr's Jazz Academy of Music. 
uh, recently because people say there's a lot of jazz academies out there. So it, you know, it needed some kind of uh, a differentiation in that. So, but uh, so, but we I started that in back in two thousand and three, and and it just started with a camp, you know, okay. a three week camp. And then about four years later, uh, I started the programming of a one band, you know, that would go all year, you know, um, uh, a band of high, you know, with high school and middle school. And then after that, we started another band, kind of a younger band of that. Uh, of of that, and so we we so I have pro programming for, and this year we're going to start with b beginners, because okay. because you know these kids have so many different things that they have to d do in school, and we're noticing that the beginning band is getting cut out, or they try to teach beginning band in the sixth grade, and it, that was cool when we you know when we were coming up, you know, right, but right, now. Right. Yeah, but now they got so many things going on that, you know, they, you know, so many classes they got to take and blah, 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 blah. So anyway, so we're going to, we're going to do a, um, a beginning band, Genesis. We're going to start that in the, in, um, in, in September. But uh, what, what we, what, what, what we've done is we've, we've, um, we've put so many uh, kids in um, um, conservatories, music schools, um, um, all types of colleges. We 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 have students that are that are you know that are that are the head of the labs you know and research labs and you know we have we have students that are are um, they're running their own um, um, band programs and high school I mean you know they high school programs college programs we have we have uh, uh, students that are recording artists. We have students that, and you know, there's a lot of students from the Jazz Academy in, in New York. You know, we, we send a lot of them to, to New York every, uh, you know, you know, uh, uh, every year. So uh, we, we've had students. I've I've had I've had five students to go to Juilliard. You know, so very good. And that's a and 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 that was a fairly new program at you know um, uh, at the time. But along the way, we have we've had some some really nice people that were have been um, donated money for, um, uh, you know, to, to for um, uh, tuition, you know, okay. and we also have we, we have one called we have one called the the Chuck uh, uh, Steenberg uh, scholarship, and that's for a, a trombone player. So if the person goes through the process, they will get a new trombone. Really? Yeah, this has been this is this has been donated by um, uh, Chuck's brother, and so uh, yeah, so and it was really going well up until the pandemic. Now nah, you know, yeah. and then when the pandemic hit, so we will prop we will we'll get back on that this year because we, you know as you know we're still we're still uh, playing catch up. Yes, we are. That. Yes, yes. And all, and also, we have another scholarship program that is uh, was, was started. Uh, the Ron, uh, the Ron Compton. Um, I'm gonna call, uh, I forget the name. Ron Compton Jazz Education Scholarship Award. Ron uh, Compton, the drummer, my buddy. Ron Compton, the drummer. Yes, yes. Oh man! Uh, right, started by started by his wife, and and that's also a scholarship program for to to use. To advance, you know, the um, the uh, any type of educational purposes for like like if we take the kids on a trip or if we need it for um, a tuition, someone's having problems paying, you know, having to it, you know, would like assistance. I should say problems need assistance on tuition. Just and that's been a wonderful scholarship. It's it's been a wrong scholarship because it really, you know, it really helps. A lot of people think that. If you based in a certain area that everybody, every, I, you know, um, everybody's rich or everybody has uh, has access to X amount of funds, that's not right. really. That's, that's not, not really. True. That's not true. No, that's not true. <laughs> that's not true. So, uh, and the, the scholarship, uh, the people that have donated, you know, um, and have these scholarships, they've been so wonderful because it re it really helps. And and I tell them all the time, you have no idea uh, what you know what your help is help is doing, you know. So um, um, uh, yeah, I mean, that, that that was a that was yeah. So yeah, it's been it's been it's been really good. Now I had I had the pleasure of seeing you with some uh, fantastic players this past uh, 
this past Saturday at the Kennedy Center. Is yeah. that one of the? Is that one of the jazz? Some, is that some cats that you work with uh, all oh, the time? Oh yeah, no, those that's a that's a pretty much the band that I work with all the time. That was Alan Johnson, a, a brilliant pianist. He he works at the. Um, um, uh the, the udc he's the he's the he's the jazz studies director at the university of uh, district columbia okay. uh, udc and then on bass was was michael Bowie, who's who's played with probably every you know so many different acts in in jazz from from abby lincoln to to manhattan transfer he has his own band and uh he also he does he works with the youth too like like we do he works with the youth yeah. as well too so um so he was on bass, and then on drums uh, was uh, uh, Jay Jefferson, J.C. Jefferson, and he's pr pretty much, you know, like a jazz historian. He's really he 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 really has a uh, 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 affinity for studying jazz history, and he actually used to work at my camp when I first okay. started. Yeah, he used to teach jazz idiom at my camp when it, when it first started. Well, you know, if you would like to. Uh have any of your players to contact me and I'd, I'd love to have them on the show sometime. I've been trying to catch up with Michael Bowie, but the gentleman stays so busy. You know, I understand how it is. Right, right, That's right. Good. Exactly. But pass it along. I'd love to, I'd love to have them. I'd love to talk to them, you know? Yeah. 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 So I would definitely do that. I would definitely do it. Yeah. So the, um, uh, yeah. And so that's pretty much so like Michael and, and, and Alan has recorded, on several of my CDs. Okay. So, so, so they know the they they know the you know the repertoire you know and I could I could tell. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So that you know uh, th that we play, and so it's you know it's it's really it's really fun sometimes you know. Yeah, it's I could really tell fun. you were having a good time. Yeah, it was it was it was, it was a good time, and it was and that was a great event uh, that yeah. uh, uh, that Dr. Sandra had had put on too. So. Uh, you know, and I was glad. To, yeah, I was glad to see you there. So it was, it was, it was just a top notch from top notch. Well, thank you, and I'm glad I was. I'm, I'm glad I was able to make it, and I was in town to be able to to get there and uh, talk about you and meet you, man. You know, yeah. I've, I've already heard your name from West a thousand times. Exactly. Exactly. Never, Same like here. I came up to you, we've never had a chance to officially right. meet and say hello. So now we have. Right, it's because we're it's because we're always busy. Now, people that work, yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. People that work, they, you know, we we we're working, you know. So. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm uh, we're, we're winding down here to uh, about two more questions, and I'm gonna get a little get a little stiffer here. Uh, being a mentor and an educator, what advice can you give to other? Uh, up and coming musicians, writers, and arrangers. Wow, uh, it would be nice if all of the musicians were writers and arrangers, because I think that if you're going to be a musician, uh, uh, first know what that know what that means, you know, and and don't have any uh, uh, misconceptions of of what it is. I think it's like one of the greatest professions uh, to be in because. You have no idea who you're gonna run. Like you, I run into you. You have no idea who you're gonna run into. Who you right. gonna? Meet. You have no idea. I mean, one day you're in this country and you're meeting people. The next day you're in another. It is just it's just such a beautiful uh, uh, profession, and you're you're spreading. And what you're doing is that you're 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 making people feel a certain way. Right. Right you're telling a story with your music and that is impactful that is impactful and it's powerful you know but uh, sometimes in music that you have to diversify your uh, uh your, your your hands in the potter you got to have you got to have it's nice to have a lot of tentacles you know so yes. you know so you like so it's, you know writing arranging and for the, the arrangers, if the arrangers have a little bit of knowledge of what the horns can play or whatever, and usually a, an, an arranger has one main instrument, you know, or two. But if you if you could re really know something, the characteristics of the other other instruments, so that when you write, you're writing from that perspective, or just not writing from the you know from the computer nowadays. You know, like when we started, we'd sit down with a piece of paper, <laughs> and, right? And the, and the piano, we're banging out on the piano. Over, I got a piano right here, and we're banging out on the piano. 
But nowadays they're writing on computers. Yes. And as you know, the notes don't sound exactly the same on a computer or these keyboards as it does from a piano, you know, because the notes don't resonate as the same. So you're not hearing, uh, you know, overtones and stuff. So this is just kind of a pet peeve. So, you know, you know, try to do the writing as much as you can acoustically. So to see if you can hear all different types of possibilities, not uh, just the possibilities that are, you know, you know, that are, you know, garnered when you use some type of an electronic keyboard, you know, so, right, right. Uh, you know, uh, uh, that that type of thing. And of course, uh, you know, knowing as much about the business as you can legally, you know, especially if you're a writer, you know, especially if you're a writer and arranger, making sure that you have it uh, protected. For Just for instance, I had a, I, my, my last CD came out in 2020. It's called A Real Jazz Whisperer. I didn't, I didn't write the tune. That tune was written by Alan Johnson. So some, some person from a college, I'm not going to, you know, for, um, down in South Carolina, asked me, I didn't understand his question at first, what year, for, he asked, what year was the tune written? I thought he meant what year did the CD come out, you know, you know, and I told him it came out in 2020, it's on iTunes, blah, 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 blah. Then he hit me back and started, I started to realize what year was it written? Mm -hmm. So I go to the person who wrote it to make sure that it's all copywritten. You know right, what I'm saying? Right, so right. Why is this guy asking me this question? You know, you know, so, uh, and it could have been ple completely harmless, but you know, these days you always want to be safer than safe than sorry. So that, that was, that was some of my mother's favorite words. Yeah. You better to be safe than sorry. Better be safe than sorry. Uh, 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 like my mother-in-law say, uh-oh, it's too late. <laughs> <laughs> So I still say that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, but I check, I check with the writer, and they say yes, it's been copywritten. But yeah, I'm, you know, you just never. So maybe he might have had something that was similar, or maybe he thought that you just never know. You just you never, never so, know, right? Yeah. Right. Anyway, so if you're writing, just make sure you have it. Even you know, even uh, uh, before you play it out in public, or certainly before you record it, make sure it's copywritten. You know. Stuff good like advice, this, good yeah, advice. Yeah, just basic, you know, just uh, just basic uh, things, you know. And yes. lat, I'll be, I can I can go on and on and on. I think a musician should be able to play everything. You know, I'm 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 you know um, um, a, 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 a quote unquote a jazz person, jazz ed educator. But I think some of the, the the musicians that I love playing with the most that can play everything. They can play funk. They can play gospel. They can play rock. And they bring all of that to the table. And now we're going to play something that's called quote unquote jazz. I love to play with players that can play a lot of different types of uh, genres, you know, yes. uh, because they bring so, all of those perspectives into it, you know, all those different fields. Yeah, have all those different fields. Yes. Yeah. So that's 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 what I say. So if you want to call yourself a rock musician, Make sure you learn, you know, you, you, other stuff. If you want to say yourself a jazz musician, go to church and yes. listen to the gospel players and blah, 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 you know, vice versa, all of that, all of that, you know. If you remember, that's what I said. Uh, it all started in gospel, blues, and jazz. That's, exactly. That's, that's the trinity right there. That's just, that's right. I remember you, you said that. And that, and that gospel uh, panel was, was, was off the, I don't guess people don't say off the chain anymore, but I learned a lot. I learned a lot on that gospel um, panel that you were on, and 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 it, and it is exactly right. And then we, you know, and somebody br uh, uh, brought up Elvis Tre uh, Elvis Presley in uh, checking out the gospel cats, and you know, and checking out the you know uh, the blues cats and all of that yes, kind. Yes. You know? And so that's what the that's what the young people have to have to realize is that yeah. You like Coltrane, but do you hear Coltrane in 1947 playing alto when he's playing with a cabaret band? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That kind of a thing, you know? So, so uh, you know, don't start with giant steps. So don't start with, you know, in a circular place. Go back and hear him, you know, in the 50s and, uh, you know, and, and do that with all your artists to try to, you know, all your heroes. So to, to hear what made them into the person that they are, that they're in, you know, that they are. That, that's 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 very good advice, Dr. Paul, and I uh, I agree with you 199 <laughs> <laughs> percent. Well, I got I got one more for you, man. Put on your seatbelt. Okay. 
Ready? Yes. What is jazz to you? Ah, what is jazz to me? Jazz to me is learning a is knowing a particular um, uh, song, music. Uh, I don't want to say vehicle. And then you, uh, you know, learning learning up some music, uh, you know, and I'm being I'm being open with this, and you uh, and you are then you, uh, you express yourself on it, and I think that I, I when you express yourself on it, you know, versus the way you play improvising, I don't think improvising is the main uh, aspect of jazz. You know okay. what I'm saying? Jazz should have, in my opinion, you know, it should have a danceable feel. That should be a danceable feel in uh, in jazz, you know. Okay. Okay. So uh, if you swing, like you say, you, you still swing swinging. I should be able to. I should be able to dance to that. You know what I'm saying? And so, um, uh, so that that's it. Should have a it should have a dance sensibility to it. Okay. okay. And Very then good. you and then you and then you improvise around that. But the improvisation is not the main thing of jazz. It's not. It's not. It shouldn't be the main thing. See what what is what is what is what is I I can go on and on and on about this topic. And the reason why I say that is because today, because of jazz education and colleges and schools and whatever. They focus so much on improvisation, and then they get away from what is the essence of jazz, you know. And so, and remember, you're trying to make people feel a certain way, right? And so, and so certain certain music, because there's no spoken word or whatever, they're gonna call it jazz. And in my opinion, I think it's improvisational music. I'm not saying it's bad. It's just that's not really jazz to me. You know what I'm saying? Man, the yeah. cats can the cats can really, really play and they're, you know, blah, blah, blah. But that's I'm not sure if that's that's jazz or not. You know, jazz has a sound to it. Just like classical music has a sound, just like rock and roll has a sound, just like funk has, you know, it has a sound, you know. And so you, you know, uh that's an old saying, that's an old saying that everybody loves jazz until it actually sounds like jazz. <laughs> 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 you know, so uh, so that so that's the, uh, that's the thing. So people want to, uh, and and jazz should have a it has a lineage, it has a legacy, it has all of that. So you can't go up to you can't go up to uh, up to and play at the New York Philharmonic and you don't know certain rudiments of classical music. Oh, I'm just gonna go up here and just play any kind of. You you can't do that. So, right, right, and you shouldn't be able to do that. You you, you can do it, and and but you can't call it jazz. You know what I'm saying? You could probably do that too, but it wouldn't be classical music because it doesn't have the rudiments. It doesn't have the legacy of the music, and your sound doesn't have it. Your approach doesn't have. It's the same way in jazz. You know, your sound, your approach should have the legacy of the music in it. In my opinion, you know. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, but you know, I, I I dig what you're saying, man. Because when I'm, I'm playing on stage with a trio, I want the audience to feel the same thing that we feel in up there. Exactly. Exactly. You know, if I'm doing if I'm doing a straight, not a a, a, a bebop two and four, but just a straight swing, mm -hmm. where I can hit them in the belly and they can wiggle and move right. and bob their head. Right. I got them. That's exactly right. That's exactly. I, I don't. It. I don't feel that I want to play over their head and make it sound like jazz, just to let them know that we studied in school. Right. Because at, most of them don't know a C from a D. <laughs> but hey. if, you, if if you play to them, to them and hit them in the chest and the belly, you got them, man. Well, they'll, you need they'll to remember your show from now on. You need to come to my camp uh, next summer and 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 play and talk to the kids because that's I say that so I say that so much is because you know you're playing for people you know that want that really doesn't know the they don't they they're not musicians and right. I tell the kids I can't tell the kids all the time you know uh, the tune that they're gonna really like the most is this ballad. You know they don't like you know their kids they don't like playing ballads why are we playing this blah, 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 blah. they want to go they want to go they want to go i said watch what i tell you 
this tune right here is going to get the most response of our, our show, you know, and all the time, it's always, you know, you know, more, more time, oftentimes than not, you know, it, it's the truth, you know, it's true. And yeah. so they start to realize it's like, look, you know, it's, you know, yeah, they, you studied in school, but you studied in school to do exactly what you said to make them feel something, you mm -hmm. know, you know, I'm not you saying know, you don't have to, you know, we, we, we all went to school, we've all studied, we played all through school, but just because you went through school playing 99 rudiments and know every rudiment in the book, that ain't going to get you no gig and keep that you on no gig. That's no, you, you know? you, that exactly <laughs> right. And, and, and if you want to play, express yourself, do all that, you want to do it, that's great. But yeah, now yeah. the next tune, you need, you need to come on back, you know, you need to come back, you know. And so in your, your, your set needs to take the, the, pe the listener, like you say, you're trying to make them feel something, you know, take them somewhere, tell them a story. Tell them a story. Tell them, tell them, everybody loves to hear a story, you know, tell yeah. them a story, you know. So the You story know one of my is, famous ballads? What's that? For all we know. For all we, absolutely. Man, yeah. that song is so deep. Yeah. If you just listen to the lyric of it, mm -hmm. it will make you cry, man, because it's very true. We don't know if we ever gonna talk again, Brother Paul. Absolutely. You know, absolutely. just think about think about that. Listen to the lyric of that tune when you get a chance. And it's nothing but a nice, simple, quiet ballad. It's a quiet bell. Yeah, yeah. I, I I know the I know the melody, but I don't know the I don't know the words. I uh, I, I have to admit I don't know what I've heard it. I've heard it sang many times. Yeah. I don't know what, but I know that's a great tune. I know it's a, a great chord progression. You know that type of thing. Not to sound like a too much of a musician, but yeah, I know it's 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 a it's a great tune. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. But it, it, exactly. Uh, infin infinize. Um. Uh, Marshall played that the other night and I mean it just got the people you know you know it got the people on their you know on, on their feet almost so yeah, yeah, yeah. That, you know that's the thing you know that's but man thing. you know uh I'm like you this this conversation really is just beginning so we're gonna have to have a part two to this <laughs> down, down the line when we absolutely can, we can squeeze it in you know absolutely uh, yeah I'm gonna jump back in here again and uh let the listeners know you've been listening to Speaking of Jazz with me, Manny Kellogg, and I'm your host, and I'm coming to you weekly. Again, that's Speaking of Jazz, and I'm your host, Manny Kellogg. Uh, if you'd like to be a guest on the show, just email me at speakingofjazz.guest at gmail.com. And uh, I would like to thank uh, Craig Daryl Harris, Music Matters, Las Vegas, Nevada, and also. Uh, Nigel J. Farmer, who is our publisher, who comes, who is in uh, France and Jazz Tribe News. So uh, these people make this show possible. I uh, take my hat off to them. I thank them for believing in me and giving me the push to go on. Dr. Paul, I thank you so much, man, for being uh, the guest today and hanging out for this. You know, we, we've been on for a good little while, man. Oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 But it, it got interesting. That's what happens when it gets interesting, you know. Absolutely not. I'm honored. Thank, thank you so. I'm honored you asked me. Thank you so much for 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 having me, and uh, and much respect to you. Thank you, sir. And before we leave, could you please let the guests know about the Mid Atlantic next year? What date is coming up? Uh, the, the Mid Atlantic Jazz Festival every President's Day weekend at the the Rockville Hilton on Rockville Pike, and it is February the 17th through the 19th. And so we we have uh, you know we have programming for any for all types of people, young people, uh, uh, seasoned people. So you know you 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 know so you see everything. We even we even have line line dancing. We have swing dancing, really? yeah, line, swing dancing, line dancing. We have uh, panels. We you know it's just it's a we call it a cruise on land. So just fantastic. Come, yeah, so just you can just go book your room and just stay there all weekend. You know. I'm gonna do that next year too, man. Yeah. I'm gonna come hang out with you for the whole weekend. You know? That would be really, really cool. That would be well, really, I look forward to that. I look forward to it too, man. And please keep me informed on uh, where you're playing at because I'd love to come out and uh, support you and uh, be, a, be a good friend of yours and supporter of the group, man. Oh, no, no. Hey, look, you're, you're working, you're busy enough, but yeah, but. Uh, yeah, I'll, 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 uh, you know, we'll, we'll be in touch, we'll, you'll be in touch and, 
And uh, I saw that I saw that you're you're on the social platforms too. So that's a good way to keep in touch as well. Yeah. Yes, sir. Again, brother Paul, Doctor Paul, I should say. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I believe in giving props where they're where they're supposed to be. Doctor Paul Carr uh -huh. has been uh, my guest today, and I want to thank you, my man, for being accessible and sharing your time with us. Until we meet again, my brother, you know my famous saying, keep on swinging, man. Keep on swinging, absolutely. <laughs> I'm a, hey, I'm gonna try. Thanks a lot. God Thank bless, bye-bye. We hope you enjoyed the show and thank you for keeping jazz alive. Don't forget to follow us on our social media channels and all the links are in the podcast description. That's it for now. Thank you.